I just want to throw out maybe a little helpful prompt um, that uh, the playwright Alana here has given us in terms of the mathematics of writing Ubu in the next 48 hours, all right? So I want to propose that Ubu to the Y minus Kofifi minus ambassadors to, here we go, plus I equals Merdre. Have a great time. Don't stop. Don't edit. It's going to be amazing Monday night. I can't wait to hear and read your Ubu Bake Offs. Go. Hey, everyone. This is Bernadette. Um, I'm here with Andrea Felix Cervantes and Gustavo Guillermo Rodriguez, and we're here in Trevor's class, Theater 327, Theater Protests and Social Change to present um, a really great experience for playwrights, Paula Vogels. Um, and just to start an introduction into our, our project, or I would like to discuss how, how theater has come to play and how it's developed. Theater is an art form that has developed into so many various concepts that can be expressed in the field from subtle to intense emotion. And while expressing these forms of performance, it can also be shunned, criticized, and can be seen differently when censorship is at the front line of decency. Throughout Donald Trump's presidency, he was left unscathed as he was broadcasted spewing speech of misogyny, bigotry, and hatred for the world being here. Why was there no one to stop him from saying such a language? It takes a certain power to be able to express speech in such a way that leads to no consequences. Hate speech continues to rise and art is politically in danger. We as historians believe in the importance of keeping art alive because it is a crucial time during a time of division. It, art is what keeps our lives and our hearts lively and activism is what helps us maintain that resistance. And with these two, they become the bread and butter. Famous playwright and 1998 Pulitzer Prize winner, Paula Vogel knows a thing or two about being censored. Paula Vogel is no stranger to the fight of, to protect art from censorship, a concern that has become even more apparent of the marginalization that BIPOC and the LGBTQIA plus are continuously being oppressed by. As a young Jewish lesbian, there's a, certain resistance that has to be held with dignity in order to be able to display the art that causes this kind of commotion to discuss for more political activism and crossing the boundaries of right and what's quote unquote too much. Her and many other queer female playwrights have gone against the odds to authentically express their art without the consequences of being restrained by this censorship. We see on, on and on in how society has censored citizens of marginalized communities through every spectrum that a being can even exist on. And art has always been a great escape for storytelling, but it is constantly being bullied by censorship and people who are just simply too uncomfortable to admit the cyclical routine of social injustice and discrimination. And now you question, okay, so why a bake off? Why? Must food be included in this concept of theater without ha actually having food? Why is there a point in making ingredients? Food is where the heart is, and it can help so much by reaching to people with the way that we enjoy it most. And to be quite fair, it makes quite the attention getter. We unfortunately live in a culture where it's filled with violence everywhere. The government, time and time, has shown us overtly and covertly how. It can display attacks on the nation. And it's a constant false message to all citizens that it's okay to murder someone else in order to prove your right and your value as a citizen. Art is one of the many perfect forms of nonviolent 
nonviolent protest that has brought many of us together. However, you're not hungry when you're hungry. When you're hungry, we as historians believe that it's food is where the greatest connections and conversations are at a dinner table that's filled with food and filled with laughter. We share food with family, lovers, friends, cousins, etc. And it's an appropriate way to create culture where there's no violence, there's no argument, there's no spewing shade. It's just simply a good conversation where you're just filling your tummy with love. It is a peaceful moment where there's no time for arguing, but a time to relax from the outside society. In chapter eight of a book called The Scholar is Human, in chapter Baking America Great Again, it focuses on the discussion of the use of food sale as a way to fight social justice. And much like how we harvest and cherish food as a unit, the Bake Off is no different. It's a way to have a group constructed exercise that helps create plays like recipes. And it'll only help in continuing the advancement of giving playwrights this leisure to explore the creativity of storytelling and how much that structure can, can expand in so many ways. The expansion of this idea can also help theater lovers and artists reflect on how theater can be a peaceful form of protest. Cooking and playwriting are, so influ are such an influential component. And we can cook for specific people for during a specific time or during a specific holiday. And it's no same with, with playwriting. We perform theater for specific people during a specific time at a specific season and for a specific show. And in both of these activities, we do things to pay homage to the people before and after us, whether that be Stanislavski or, or Hamlet or Shakespeare or even Paula Vogel, or even every other famous playwright that deserves a voice. Political activism is not anything different in this equation. The expression of their plays will pay homage to the people that did not get the opportunity to voice their opinion, and to the people that are just too small to be too loud for the world. Paula Vogel was born November 16, 1951. Vogel received her Bachelor's of Arts from the Catholic, uh, Catholic University of America in 1974 and earned her Master's degree in Performing Arts at Cornell University. Vogel has devoted much of her career to education. In 1984, she joined the faculty of Brown University where she was the founding director of the Master's of Fine Arts program in playwriting and the Dale Kellenberg Seaver Professor in Creating Writing until 2008. During that time, she, she also started a theater workshop for women in Maximum Security Detention Center at the Adults Correctional Institute in Cranston, Rhode Island. From 2008 to 2012, she was the Eugene O'Neill Professor and Chair of Playwriting at Yale School of Drama. And she will serve as a judge for the Yale Drama Series, an annual international competition for emerging playwrights in 2021 and 2022. Paula Vogel's uh, first American Bake Off was first produced in the 1980s, a time where the AIDS and Ronald Reagan uh, in, was into office in a very hard time for people, uh, especially from the LGBTQIA community. Paula Bogo and a group of theater artists, uh, specifically from New York, they decided to come together and create this um, the very first American Bake Off. This was a response to the censorship and the lack of the lack of plays that um, was being produced, mostly due to the fact that during this time, a lot of playwrights were focusing on the AIDS epidemic and trying to give a voice uh, to the ones that couldn't be able to speak um, through this theater platform. Uh, this was very, very emotional for emotional time period for Paula Bogo as she lost a brother to, to the AIDS epidemic. Trump's political theatrics through his language and demeanor add to the satiristic nature intended by the Bake Off and how it is viewed as protest art. According to James M. Jasper, a sociologist and instructor at the Graduate Center of the City University of New York, marks in his book, The Art of Moral Protest, Culture, Biography, and Creativity in Social Movements, that the basic dimensions of protest are created by resources, strategies, culture, and biography. These kinds of protests create structure 
to how people choose to dissent and the dimensions that best identifies the national Ubu Roy Bagoff is cultural, which he defines as shared understandings, emotions, moral and cognitive and their embodiments as it is quote linked individuals with institutionalized symbols by providing means that we can discern in the consciousness of individuals, the ideas they espouse, the assumptions they reveal in interview, and in the formal public events, artifacts, and documents of society, unquote. With that in mind, Fogel made ingredients in a way that was identifiable to Trump's person in attempt to reflect that he was interacting with American society and the social structure that parallels Jerry's titular character. These parallels between the two show the underlying themes of oppression, brutality, and equity that was rampant in his administration. According to the Southern Poverty Center, the nonprofit organization committed to monitoring the activities of domestic hate groups and other extremists reported 1,094 bias-related incidents in the month following the election in November 2016 that included hate crimes specifically targeted towards LGBTQIA plus and BIPOC communities. Trump's interactions with the world affects the American culture, and he further sets it adrift by polarizing the country with his inflammatory rhetoric and the social policies that were harmful to these communities. It is only natural that Vogel called to arms the theater community and the general public to participate in our national grassroots movement to bring forth people to share bread on President's Day in 2008 to comment on the socio-political climate and global conditions by Trump and his administration. Although Vogel's primary recruits were high school and college students, she was clear that anyone, regardless of playwriting level or political alliance could participate in or watch this function. This democratization of the Bake Off allows for the expansion of ideas, much like how the Bake Off exercise is for those who participate. They learn how to use a play structure that is satirical in nature by using the images and artifacts left by their subjects that can prompt private or public reaction. Because of the nature of the bake-off, the ideology of the content leans liberally, thus causing some people to reason that this theater is merely another echo chamber in the culture war between Republicans and progressives. Emma Durbin, a writer for the Theater School's Dramaturgy blog, argues that, quote, when I come to the theater, I expect to witness new perspective in a different world from my own. I have now heard the same jokes on the news and social media for two years at least regarding Trump, unquote, which is one of the main reasons why the Democratic Party failed to capture more voters. Conservative white groups who were economically lower class in middle America felt a commonality with the underdog character that was being driven by conservative media outlets. Plenty of memes tackle his physical stature, speech, which makes it elitist in Durbin's terms, and alienates potential audiences from creating more meaningful connections with their work. The protest work becomes one-dimensional if theater only includes the judgments of the playwright rather than offering introspection to an audience that can lead social transition in the world, whether on a micro or macroscopic level. The playwright offers choices instead of expectations to the viewer. Durbin's argument is valid, but one of the most important factors to consider about the Bake Off follows the motto, quote, fight shit with maître, unquote meaning that there is no winning when the two groups use the same strategies. A rather ironic motto that perfectly encapsulates the two-party division within our country. 18th century philosopher Henry Bergson wrote, laughter is provoked by the imposition of something mechanical that is non-living onto a living organism, unquote. Unlike anyone else, people are prone to get caught into the machine or system but how people see the immediacy of that situation is important. Vogel was smart to stitch the sketches together to show that the system or mechanics of the bake-off is cyclical, showing that humans are destined to repeat themselves if they continue to support the present system of oppression, making the bake-off an effective entry into political theater. Now let's go over some critical voices, reviews, and receptions of Uber Roy bake-offs. Paula Vogel, 
Bobo Rebecca was very motivating as it allowed play playwrights of all cultures, genders, and writing experiences to be part of this unique format of expressing their frustrations with the 45th president's lack of leadership. Going back to the origins of Paulo Volga's Bake Off, playwrights in the 80s were being censored mostly because of their use of theater as a form of political relevance on the government's response to the AIDS epidemic. Many playwrights were using theater as the most convenient platform to express the reality of the epidemic and thus caused the government of Ronald Reagan to look bad in the eyes of the people. The government couldn't afford to have playwrights question their actions towards the epidemic, so they began to censor most of them. This caused the productions of plays to be significantly low. Paula Vogel and a group of New York playwrights gathered up to express their discomfort on the low production of plays and the use of commercial American theater to evade the AIDS epidemic topic. This struck a nerve to Paula Vogel and a group of colleagues, and her group of colleagues, who came up with the idea of creating a writing exercise or competition that would grant 48 hours for participants to write skits using three ingredients. The purpose of this writing workshop was to get playwrights writing and thus cause the production of the purpose of this writing workshop was to get playwrights writing and those and thus cause the production of new plays to flow at a faster speed. Paula Boko's Bake Off became more relevant in 2018 when she prompted the Ugo Roy Bake Off, which responded to the 45th president of the United States actions towards the people of color and LGBTQIA community. According to Howard Sherman, from the states, Ubu, Ubu Bake Off gives voice to theater's anti-Trump insurgent states, quote, the Bake Off inspired instant camaraderie, end quote. This was part of Paula Vogel's intention at the initiation of the Bake Off. Vogel wanted people to come together and voice their vexation and the disruptive, act, disruptive actions and comments of the 45th president and its administration. Vogel used one of her teaching tools to advocate a freedom of speech themed writing workshop that allowed playwrights to put their emotions into a piece of paper. Howard Sherman states, quote, the low pressure everyone is welcome spirit has also stripped away any sense of theoretical hierarchy or critical judgment, end quote. This was satisfying for playwrights, actors and producers such as Mr. Sherman as it allowed them to focus on the content of their writing instead of whatever instead of what theater critics would have to say. The freedom that the Bake Off transpired even gave Mr. Sherman motivation to give writing a try again, something that he hadn't done in over 40 years. It's safe to say that the Bake Off felt liberating, not only for playwrights, but for people involved in advocating a voice to communities being attacked by the former president. Paula Bogos Uber Roy Bake Off not only gave Howard Sherman the opportunity to feel liberated from the theoretical hierarchy imposed in theater for many years, but it also provided a foundation for theoretical organizations advocating for social change. One of those, uh, one of those organizations who was part of the 2018 President's Day Uwe Roy Bake Off was the, was the Two Strikes Theater Company. The Two Strikes Theater Company Foundation is based on a response to national outcry on system, systematic racism. Two strikes also emphasize an empowering woman of color, in particular black women, who in their theory have two strikes against them being woman and being black. According to Adrian C. Weltzel, artistic director at the Two Strikes Theater Company, states, quote, these two strikes are seen as negative in society. She continues, something not to be pro proud of and is often disrespected, neglected, neglected and unprotected, end quote. A very strong statement that is often overlooked, but very true and necessary to address. On multiple occasions, the 45th president of the United States on political rallies stated, quote, Black Americans had nothing to lose. Again, he stated, Black Americans had nothing to lose, end quote. Referencing the low expectations imposed by society for for being black in America. Remarks like this prompted theater companies such as the Two Strikes to advocate against systematic racism. Inspired by Paulo Bogo's Bake Off, the Two Strikes company decided to create a virtual Bake Off named Brown Sugar in a collaboration with Baltimore Strand Theater Company in order to empower black women to write small 10 minute plays that would prompt the conversation and what it was like to be a black woman in America. 
Playwrights that participated in the Brown Sugar Bake Off express how exciting it was to connect their personal experience with other Black women that have faced a similar situation before and how empower empowering it is to have them come together to voice their experiences. Often many voices are left unheard mainly because there isn't a platform that would allow women of color to have this freedom of speech. In a world where for many years, the, the theoretical hierarchy is controlled by white males. It is safe to say the national grassroots intended by Paulo Bogo has begun to flourish as it being used as a foundation to reach voices all over the nation. To sit down and finally have this unwanted but necessary conversation on social issues left aside for many years. We as a group wanted to see why this form of mass political theater exercise by Paulo Bogo was very inspiring for theater companies who have been working on social issues for many years. So our group was able to find an article from the Minnesota Playlist magazine where Jessica Franklin, Franken, in collaboration with Al Alayana Jacqueline and Julia Brown created a round table conversation marathon after the Bake Off with a group of playwrights who participated in the Bake Off to get, in the Bake Off itself to get their experiences. It is important to mention that Jessica Franken, Alayana, and Julia are all part of the Playwright Center. And this article was written by Jessica Franken. The Uber Roy Bake Off Marathon consisted of an interview where Jessica herself competed with playwrights such as Tim J. Ford, Stacey R. Rose, Andrew Rosendorf, Alana Jacqueline, and Julia Brown. Jessica begins her interview questioning Tim, quote, how did this experience feel for you? End quote. He responds, quote, it felt like max exorcism, end quote. Powerful words to describe the feelings going through Tim's head. This is how many people were feeling towards a president that only cared about his own self, the, self in, the selfishness, the egotism, and the words that came out of his mouth caused people like playwright Tim Ford to feel the need to let out the anger and disgust with his actions and words. Andrew then stepped in and mentioned, quote, the five hour event was just exhausting. The emotional swings and moving from comedy to sadness and to living with this, end quote, was very exhausting. Exhaustion is a huge word to describe how it felt to be dealing with a leader that made the motion a state of mind of people worse than what it's been for years now, trying to deal with the current concurrent social issues. One response that stands out in this interview is from playwright Al Alayana, as she states, quote, we didn't just redo Uberoy. We took ingredients from it and made this new thing that can live in today's as opposed to trying to make today fit into the past, end quote. The most accurate response to Paula Vogel's intention when initiating that adaptation of Uber Roy as a Bake Off. The basis of the Bake Off was not only just to get playwrights going, but it was used as a political platform for political activism. The beauty of the Bake Off is that it allows access to people from different cultures and countries to respond to the issues in today's society. Social issues have a domino effect that not only affects the people where this problem, where the problem is happening, but it also affects people from all over the world that have to deal with the repercussions of a government that is run by a selfish president. One personal connection that I found with it is as a person that's also part of the LGBTQIA community um, that also stands for feminism and to protect art from, from the censorship and a person who's also Latino and how we can see how lives like these marginalized communities have been constantly been hidden and Every time there's a shed of light, it's always, oh no, it's too offensive. It's it's too much for, for viewers to see, even though history and systematic racism has said otherwise. And um, this gives such a great opportunity for those who don't have the access to a huge theater company who isn't on equity, who just has the same resistance like a like every other passionate citizen, but also the creativity of just a powerful theater maker and having those two components in this exercise um, just only helps inspire 
people like me and people like Gustavo and Andrea to express our art without having the fear of being told that it's not good enough or it's not appropriate enough to be presented in front of society.